To be a sound designer today, it's, uh, there, there are just so many extraordinary tools available out there to us. Uh, another program that I want to introduce you to, which I've used uh, for a number of years, which I find um, quite uh, versatile, quite powerful, is a, is a product made by native-instruments.com, and it's called Reactor 5. They make a number of interesting uh, kind of software programs, but uh, this is one that has been used for a number of years, um, particularly in the electronic dance community, uh, it, but it gives great editing capability for editing and making your own sounds, <clears throat> and also a lot of interesting kind of live control over the sound, and that's... Um, you may have detected that's one of my interests is that when I'm looking for software programs, uh, I'm, I'm looking for programs which are both powerful and give a lot of flexibility over the, the sort of the micro level of the sound. The more access to the sound design uh, elements that, that I can have over that, and then the more creative I can imagine the sound or, or the, the more versatile I can be in my creative uh, outputs. <clears throat> and also for, for your purposes, uh, since I don't know exactly what kind of desire and what kind of goals you might have in sound design, the more uh, access to the more powerful programs you have, the more flexibility that you would have to be successful in whatever kind of uh, sound design application you're interested in. So this uh, program is called Reactor. There are, it's on its fifth version now. Um, you can look through their website and, and kind of look through the different kind of uh, descriptions of what's going on in the program. Uh, it, it really is sort of uh, a very wide-ranging kind of program, simply from the fact that uh, many of the people that are developing for this are uh, community people who exchange different kind of uh, designs. Uh, <coughs> Unlike some of these programs, uh, Reactor gives you access to the patching and editing for most of these. Uh, you're, you're seeing the control uh, interface, which you would be most of the time working from, but it's very easy to go into and look at the editing of that and to sort of customize how the whole thing is put together. And, and uh, much like you would see in Max or Kima, some of the other programs we've looked at where you have control over the editing, uh, you also have that level of uh, sort of building block control that you have over the any of the patches that you find in, in Reactor. So that's, to me, one of the things I find most useful about this program is I can go in and customize that and understand sort of how this particular interface is putting together and how the sound is functioning uh, sort of at a different level. So I encourage you to take a look at the website and obviously there are a lot of tutorials and videos that you can look through on here. So now let's take a look at the actual program. <coughs> So when you open up Reactor, you'll get uh, this kind of screen. <coughs> and this is the main kind of program screen we'll be working from. Uh, usually it comes with a lot of factory different uh, sounds that come with it. For example, if I open up the ensemble folders, uh, this would be the one you might want to start with. The, the classics are the ones that have been around for a while. Uh, here again, you can do effects processing where you can process a microphone going into it. Very interesting kind of effects processing you can work with. Uh, groove boxes, uh, a couple of those that have come with it. Uh, simple transformers, which are both of those are grain states. Travelizer are quite interesting. Um, the sequence. Uh, synthesizers are also uh, really sort of amazing. I, I won't go through all of these. I'm just trying to give you a hint of how this program works. Uh, let me take a look at maybe just one of the, the straight synthesizers for a second. The um, uh, many, many of these are very interesting, but let's take a look at Steam Pipe, for example. If I double click on that, then you would see this would be the sort of the standard interface uh, for Steam Pipe. Um, in order to play this, I don't have a MIDI keyboard hook connected into this, but I'm going to pull up a kind of a software MIDI keyboard, which is called MIDI Keys. Uh, let me just quickly go in uh, to Reactor and make sure that it will uh, connect to that. So you can go into the audio media preferences for that. <coughs> And then I can uh, pull up uh, the, the MIDI connection and see, does it recognize? Yeah, it does recognize MIDI keys, so I should be able to, to play that on the web. Uh, let me assign my output on this. Um, let's see, go back to the routing of that. Okay, we're set to the main outputs. Let me just change this. I'm going to change the output of this to um, Soundflower so that I can access it in my screen capture system here. I think that will do it. All right. So. When I now start to play all my MIDI keys, I can also access this from the keyboard, the computer keyboard as well. So now we're playing this scene. What's great about this, even before you get into uh, trying to customize the synthesis patches for this, and obviously most of these will have their own built-in effects processing as part of that, each of these screens will look very different because each different patch has its own sort of internal logic. So what's very useful is to go through and try out a lot of the, in most cases, many, many different presets that you can pull up. 
So if I pull up the steam pipe, which is the main setting for this. This one has some very interesting kind of physical modeling uh, operations to it, but the samples on this are combined in ways that uh, really give you some really interesting kinds of qualities of this. And the, um, the different presets are quite stunning on this one. So you can go through and just try out uh, scores of these. Okay, so this is a typical sort of uh, synthesis patch where you can, if you go through and look at this, most of what we've talked about in this class, and I've got the information turn, turned on so it will give me some hints as I leave my cursor over certain things. For example, if I want to see what is going on here, it tells me this is the high pass cutoff frequency and so forth. So this is really good to, to leave this uh, eye turned on so you get information if you're not clear as to what all these are. Reverberation time, so forth. Uh, until you get used to understanding what each one is, I, I would suggest leaving that on. So up here we can also move into the, uh, the edit mode for this and then uh, we go from there into the steam pipe edit and you'll see here is the sort of the underneath how this patch is arranged. There is one steam pipe patch which is being sent to its output which I'm now sound to the sound flower. So that's the basic uh, high level. If I double click on this then we get the next level down. We get to see different other objects that are patched together uh, into amplifier and, and into various kinds of other settings. So if I keep going down double clicking on steam <coughs> See there's an envelope generator patched into a generator. If I look at the generator then we get to see its construction, uh, noise generator going through different kind of filtering, uh, resonance control uh, going in through some DC noise into a crossfade of those together, going to the output, so forth, so forth. So you can see that you can keep going down to the, to the basic level of this and customize things and um, really do lots of editing of this if you want to change any of those sounds. But in most cases, you're, there, there's so many different presets, I would suggest before you're getting to this level that you just explore the different options of, of each sound uh, on that. So that's uh, really one of the great features of this is you can, you can do the patching editing, which is quite similar to what we've been talking about and uh, kind of how does synthesis uh, sort of work with uh, different kind of uh, uh, analog or, or graphic symbols that, that tell us sort of what's going on in the sound. So that's uh, just a simple synthesis. Let me take you to another one. Uh, if we go into perhaps Electronic Instruments Volume 2, maybe take a look at this one. And I'll not say what I just did there. <clears throat> so in this one, uh, this has, which many of the features have, you'll see up here there's a sequencer that is built into this particular uh, sound. And then down below here we have the synthesizer part of that. So they're both going to be running together. So if I just turn on the play bar for that, You'll, you'll hear that the sequencer is playing and there, there are certain chords that get triggered along the way here in that sequencer. And then uh, any of this stuff, remember, you can edit on the fly. So I can be changing things um, as, it's, as it's changing here. You can be changing uh, the different kind of aspects of things can be created here. So now let's try a few of the presets. I can also be playing pitches here again. So I can be playing along and triggering certain things. Each of these patches, the keyboard will be sometimes playing pitches, other times it'll be set up to give you control uh, over control changes that are happening in the piece. I'll just take a look at a few of the presets here, for example, if I just randomly go down to... The great thing about this is you could, you could detach the sequencer from the sequencer. So I could keep that particular uh, sequencer file going, but I could also change the, the uh, synthesis to something else. And play around till you end up with some very interesting combinations. And of course, you've got complete control over this. Um, I mentioned to you that you can always <clears throat> Uh, change the editing for this and the control for this. If we go into 
uh, this particular screen, let me stop that playing for a second, <coughs> you'll see here there are certain continuous controller MIDI commands that are already assigned to different uh, parts of this particular patch. But it's very easy if I want to assign, say, for example, uh, my note number 60. Uh, we see some notes are already op open there. Let me clear all the ones that are not assigned for a second, and then I'll turn on auto. So as I play this note 60, it'll pop that up. And then all I've got to do is sort of drag this over to some parameter that I would like to change to have that note to be altering in, in the patch. Um, so let me, before I do that, let me play um, uh, the sequence again and see where I might hear some clear kind of changes. Maybe the frequency of the LFO, or should I change this to something else, or there are a number of these that, I'm going to turn this off for a second. Um, number of harmonics in this se sequence might also change the sound quite a bit. So I'm looking for something that I might be interested in what happens in the sound, how much delay in the sound. All right, so that has a kind of a drastic sound of it, of changing that first delay here. So if I then wanted to go over and drag this over to the delay amount, release it on that. So now this number 60, as I hit the number 60, it will then start to change the delay sound for that. So you can see very easily, I could set up any kind of keyboard command <coughs> and have that assigned to particular parameters on this patch or the sequencer. So you could do lots of real-time live changes of the sound as it's playing. And of course, moving through all these presets, you get just, uh, just uh, unlimited kinds of options on this one particular patch. So th that's a good example of just a, a quick way that you can control the patches real time. There are, are just many, many examples to, that to work with. Let me just kind of quickly take you through a couple more of these. Maybe the metaphysical function. <clears throat> this is kind of an interesting one. <clears throat> and you'll see this has a lot of dynamic changes to some things already built into this one. So, and then you can you can set these dynamic. This this is just kind of showing you some of the morphing and cross fading between mm -hmm. some of the changes that are taking place. But you've got you know level A, you've got one section over here, level B, and you can cross fade these functions, turn them on, so you can you can put different kind of elements that would be shifting into the sound as it's happening, and then uh, have certain things that you turn on that you can assign to different kind of controls. So many many different kind of live functions on this. But if you just kind of work through some of the uh, different kind of presets on this. It's a very interesting uh, complex patch with a lot of different samples that are being accessed in this, a lot of different reverb. Obviously you can feel a lot of different effects processing are happening in this. Um, so almost an unlimited number of different sounds can come out of this one, but as you play around with just changing some of the editing of this, you start to find unlimited uh, other options for this. So uh, really just a really kind of a, an exciting set of programs you can do here. Uh, one more just quickly sort of just kind of show the diversity of different things you can do here. This is another a program where you can, I'm triggering a note now, this is just a synthesizer, but you start to see here multiple oscillators, four different oscillators uh, here at the top, uh, lots of LFOs where you can, you can change settings, uh, then here's the modulation section, envelope generators, uh, LFOs down here as well, and then you've got multiple filters you can run the sounds through, wave shapers, equalizers built into this, more effects processing you can control. So you see in this one, it's, it's more than just a simple synthesizer, it's more of a complex synthesizer kind of uh, ability here. So as you start to play with these, you start to get very interesting uh, kind of arrangements uh, that can pull up on this. Now any of the, the changes of presets, you can assign that to uh, some of these uh, uh, continuous controller commands you can see here. If I had a uh, MIDI box with continuous controller set up, I've got lots of continuous controller things already pre-programmed into these variables. So this patch is designed to be played live, um, but also at the same time you've got tremendous control over the sound as it's playing. And uh, just with lots of presets, uh, you can just go for days really customizing sound and exploring sound. And then because you have manual control over, over every aspect of the sound, both from its oscillators, its, its uh, the, the modulation of those, envelope generator changes, uh, lots of filtering, um, wave shaping, equalizing, effects processing to that. You have complete control over the sound from, from this one little patch here. 
So Reactor gives you a tremendous control and, and um, the fact that you can move into its, its editing for that and really sort of see what's happening and you can sort of see here a, a pretty sophisticated patch uh, going on underneath this that uh, you know, if you really get into this you could, you could explore for days even just the, the distortion level and so forth. Uh, th th this was uh, quite, a, quite an extraordinary patch <coughs> that, that you find and, and these are just come with a program as well. So this is Reactor. Uh, hopefully, you'll, uh, if you have a chance to, to explore this, it really is, um, to me, one more. Every time I work with this program, I, I discover brand new categories of sounds and things like this that uh, once you understand, I think, with this course, you should be able to pull up almost any synthesizer patch in any of these programs and at least know enough about what each of these functions do to explore what's happening in that and then to customize your own sounds. So Reactor uh, is another great program for doing sound synthesis and uh, lots of loop playing for, for live performance. The preceding program is copyrighted by Emory University.